In our respective capacities as chairperson of the NDFP Reciprocal Working Committee on Social and Economic Reforms and NDFP Chief Political Consultant, Julie and I wish to convey our sincerest condolences to the beloved family and to all the close comrades and friends of Comrade Randall Echanis. We condemn the forces of state terrorism under the orders of the tyrant Duterte, who murdered Karandi. According to witnesses, he was under surveillance for one month by the murderers, who continued to use the same van up to the time of the murder and who put off the street light and CCTV on the night before they broke into his apartment to murder him as well as his concerned neighbor. Those who are now in power are gleeful that they have killed Karandi, but he now stands as a great hero and martyr in the revolutionary history of the Filipino people. He is an outstanding patriot, a proletarian revolutionary fighter, and a peasant advocate of the highest order. Even now, the evil counter-revolutionary forces of treason, tyranny, butchery, and corruption are in an ignominious position even while they try to cover up their criminal responsibility and also try to demean his remains and name. Justice will be served in the continuing course and ultimate victory of the Philippine Revolution and the Filipino people that Karan deserved for more than five decades, so resolutely, so vigorously, and so fruitfully. His adherence to revolutionary principles, his accomplishments, and his sacrifices, including three stints of political detention, and now his martyrdom, will continue to inspire the toiling masses of workers and peasants and keep him alive in their hearts and minds from one generation to another. We have known Karandi since he was chairman of the University of the East chapter of Kabatang Makabayan in the 1960s. We also remember him as one of the young outstanding cadres who came forward when the call was made for Ilocano-speaking cadres to join the expansion of revolutionary work of the Communist Party of the Philippines and the New People's Army in Northern Luzon. He excelled at realizing the political education, organization, and mobilization of the peasant masses. We witnessed the development of Karandi as a proletarian revolutionary. He had a comprehensive and profound knowledge of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, and its application in the study of Philippine history and current circumstances of the Filipino people. He had a firm grasp of the general line of people's democratic revolution with a socialist perspective, even as he focused on the land problem and the struggle for genuine land reform as the main content of the democratic revolution. His long experience in studying the land problem as well as working with and learning from the peasant masses made him an expert and authority on the need for a program of genuine land reform and national industrialization as the basis for the development of the Philippine economy and for the just peace that is either the result of peace negotiations or the victory of the People's Democratic Revolution against the intransigent forces of foreign and feudal domination. By dint of his lifelong advocacy of land, genuine land reform and rural development in concert with national industrialization, social justice and economic development as the foundation of a full national sovereignty and independence, he has risen to such high positions as the chairman of the Anak Pawis Party List and Deputy General Secretary of Kilusang Magbubukid ng Pilipinas, Senior Consultant of the NDFP Negotiating Panel, Member of the Reciprocal Working uh, Committee on Social and Economic Reforms and Chairman of its Subcommittee on Agrarian Reform and Rural Development. Despite his high qualifications, Karandi was humble and unassuming. He had an amiable personality and a fine sense of humor which endeared him to comrades and friends among the toiling masses as well as among the intelligentsia. He was highly respected for being ever ready to impart his knowledge and share information as well as learning from others. He was a model of good conduct and discipline, participated freely and frankly in deliberations and always acted in accordance with the policies, principles and collective decisions 
of the organizations which, to which she belonged. It is a grave crime of extreme malice, stupidity, and inhumanity that the tyrannical regime of Duterte decided to murder Karandi, who had been seriously involved in peace negotiations as a sincere advocate of genuine land reform, social justice, and economic development. He was in his senior age, far beyond the age of the combatant, and was supposed to be legally protected by the safety and immunity guarantees of the JASIG. According to inside reliable sources, the principal authors of the murder of Karandi include the most responsible for the murders of Bishop Ramento with the use of knives, Jonas Burgos, Caparago, and others from the time of Gloria Arroyo to Rodrigo Duterte. There are already verified facts being collected, examined, and evaluated. Even now, they point to certain military and police officers under the direction of the National Task Force to eliminate the revolutionary movement in the name of anti-communism and anti-terrorism, to the notoriously immoral policy and unjust law of state terrorism which Duterte and his gang of butchers wish to impose on the people in order to realize the scheme of fascist dictatorship and unbridled corruption. We are certain that justice will be achieved in the case of Karandi and other victims in the long course and ultimate victory of the People's Democratic Revolution. Long live, Long live the, memory the memory of Comrade, of Comrade Randall, Randall Chanis. Chanis. Turn, Turn grief into, into revolutionary courage. courage. Carry, Carry forward, forward the People's, the People's Democratic, Democratic Revolution. Revolution. Long, Long live, live the Filipino proletariat, proletariat and people. Long live the World Proletarian, proletarian Revolution. Revolution.